Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey, brother. I like it long. Shots fired. Jay, we are all aware of the Pixar theory. This big idea that unbeknownst to anybody, all of the movies exist on one giant timeline. And piecing it all together and figuring out the ways that they can all be connected is super fun. But at the same time, I'm not at all holding out on this idea that at some point in time, Pixar is going to do some type of gigantic crossover event featuring characters from all the different movies. I mean, can you even imagine Carl giving Wally a high five? Because I can and it's amazing from a safe distance, of course. We can dream for it, we can hope for it, but come on, the idea of a studio putting together a 10 year long 20 movie crossover event is exactly what Marvel did. And not just that they did it, they nailed it. Assemble. If you look at the top 11 highest grossing movies of all time, all four Avengers movies are on there. And if you go down to 12, that's Black Panther. Turns out having a giant universe of super popular characters that might pop up in one another's movies is something that people really like. And if I were Disney, I would absolutely want more franchises exactly like that. The trouble is it's hard to just build this from scratch. Like for Marvel, I think that it works because that's just kind of how the comics already work. All of the characters already exist in the same universe. It might be harder to exclude them from one another's stories than to include them. Star Wars is kind of like this. There's like a bazillion different ways to consume it between the movies, the TV shows, the books themselves, the comics. It's expected to see popular characters pop up somewhere, even if they aren't like the main part of the plot. And while Disney already owns both Star Wars and Marvel, don't you think they kind of love to have their own homegrown cast of characters that all exist in the same universe together? Well, what if I told you that this might already be in motion? Welcome to the Disneyverse. Guys, before we dive on in, I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. It is absolutely no secret that lately we've had to spend a lot of time inside. And a way that I found to feel a little bit more productive during that particular time is by trying to start straightening my teeth with Candid. And if you're unhappy with your smile or if you're ever self-conscious in photos, then I recommend Candid to you. Candid makes clear aligners that are comfortable, removable, and the best part, completely invisible. They offer remote oversight from an orthodontist throughout your entire treatment so you never have to step foot in a doctor's office. And they do all of that at a fraction of the cost of traditional braces. So if you're planning ahead for a special event or just want to be more confident with your smile, most people see results in just six months with many people seeing it way before then. So if you're ready to get started for a limited time, you can get $75 off your order by going to candidco.com slash SCB. Again, that is candidco.com com slash SCB for $75 off. Link is in the description down below. Guys, I am so excited to be talking about this today. Ever since we did the Pixar theory, people have been asking if there is a Disney version of it. And it's so difficult to put something like that together because Disney goes back so far into history, like into the 1930s, specifically February 4th, 1938, when Snow White was introduced to the world. How crazy is it that we are less than 20 years away from Snow White being 100 years old? That being said though, that is a huge amount of time with a ton of different characters with what is kind of a lack of cohesiveness across the board. So it's pretty daunting to think about going through and even retroactively trying to incorporate all of those characters into one shared universe. So no, this theory isn't going to be incorporating every single Disney animated movie ever. We're going to be starting with Tangled. Personally, I believe that Tangled kicks off the start of the second Disney Renaissance. And so we're only going to be looking at the movies that are computer animated since then. So that includes Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Frozen 2. And with the next film on the slate to be included in the theory being Raya and the Last Dragon. So starting with Tangled released back in 2010, we have the story of a baby girl who is given a magical golden tea 
brewed with a magic flower. The tea caused her hair to go blonde, and when sung to, basically had healing powers that could pretty much allow for an immortal existence. Admittedly, that is a weird sentence. That power exists though until the end of the movie when she cuts it all off in order to save her boyfriend and gets this adorable new haircut. A haircut that can be spotted right here in Frozen right before Elsa's coronation ceremony. Yeah, Rapunzel and Eugene are both in attendance for the ceremony. He says to the people who, if they've made it to this video, probably already know that, but like seven people just had their minds blown, right? You're welcome. This is the first big connector between these two movies. And while it is brief, I do think it plays an important role of building foundation as we continue to carry this idea forward. Because that at the very least allows us to know that the kingdoms of Corona and Arendelle exist in the same universe. Which isn't that hard to believe to begin with. Both movies feature a princess with magical powers in about the same time frame, technology wise. The tricky thing is though, none of the other movies in this lineup are even remotely close to this particular timeline. Like, how could you have a crossover event where Moana could meet up with Elsa and Rapunzel? I know, I phrased that question in a way that suggests that it's not even possible, and I still got chills, you guys. Mm, this is just too much fun to think about. The point is, Moana just exists way too far in the past, but I can't help but notice that some of the rules that apply in Moana also applied to the kingdom of Arendelle. For one, we know that Moana is friends with the ocean and we see the ocean interact with people in a way that is very similar to how the Northulja interact with the water spirits. And the plot of Frozen 2 and Moana are both driven forward in a very similar way. Ooh, someone built a dam and upset the spirits and now everyone is stuck in a forest and the spirits are attacking a nearby city. And ooh, someone stole the heart of Tafiti and upset the spirits and now everyone is stuck on the highland and the spirit is attacking the land. Also, not for nothing, Giant Earth Spirit? Giant Earth Spirit. Sure, one's an island and some are rock golems, but hey, climate, plate tectonics, can't believe I'm about to say this, but geology. What's wrong with geology? <laughs> Nothing, it rocks. <laughs> Fantastic humor aside, and despite these differences, how are you ever going to get these two characters together? I mean, it's not like Moana has access to a magic flower that could keep her alive forever and you know long enough to meet up with the rest of them. Or is it? Take a close look right here as Tafiti is regrowing all of the plants on the island, and there is another golden flower exactly like the one Rapunzel drank as a baby. He says to an avid Disney audience that has almost certainly already spotted this, but hey guys, don't forget about those seven people. We're doing it for them. This tiniest of inclusions though is important because it establishes that Moana exists in the same universe as Rapunzel. And perhaps more importantly, offers her a gateway through time to meet up with the others. Okay, so, so far our big crossover Disney princess Avenger team is going to include Anna, Elsa, Moana, and Rapunzel. How fun is that? I'm underselling it. My face would literally like melt off. But who else? How about the entire Big Hero 6 team? Again, it's all about the Easter eggs. Now, it might seem particularly difficult for Big Hero 6 to exist in the same universe because it's taking place so much further in the future. But I assure you, it is quite connected. The biggest giveaway is right here in Fred's courtyard where we see a statue of none other than Hans. What Hans from Frozen in Big Hero 6? How could that possibly? You guys get it. I, I'm, going, I'm taking it too far. The question is though, why is that statue there at all? Well, we actually have an entire video dedicated to the idea that Fred could be descended from Hans himself. You can check that out if you wanna click the card right up there. But the high points are these. Fred's family is inexplicably rich for completely unexplained reasons. Hans, despite being totally evil, is also super rich, and we know that he survives till the end of Frozen because we just continue to see him, so it's entirely plausible that he just went on to have some other family. And why else would you have some statue of a bad guy in your courtyard at all? Plus, in the mansion, Fred actually has a landscape painting of Arendelle, that seems pretty telling. And also, also, actually, actually, Fred's family is off vacationing where? 
the family island. And where is Hans from? The Southern Isles. Also, 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 actually, 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 Fred even has a painting of Hans' horse. Draw whatever conclusion you want from that, but it seems to me they went out of their way to make Hans and Fred connected. And either way, the statue itself provides us another connection between these movies. But perhaps more importantly, the question probably should be, how could the team of Big Hero 6 find a way to meet up with the Princess Vengers? Query what would be the best team for this name? That's not how it works. What would be the best name for this team? Leave your thoughts down below. Well, if you've seen our Tadashi is here video, then you already know the answer to this question. Time travel. It's always time travel, which if it means Moana, Anna, Elsa, and Rapunzel can be on the screen together fighting crime, then I'm into it. Now, I completely understand that this sounds a little far-fetched or potentially out of left field, but I assure you it is not. Professor Callahan's daughter, who has been trapped inside of a wormhole and who they rescue at the end of the movie, has been trapped inside of that wormhole for years and years. Not for nothing, but this has serious Ant-Man quantum realm vibes going on. It also kind of looks like the place in weird time warp land that Doctor Strange goes to to fight Dormammu. But beyond that, Big Hero 6 just has lots of time travel references happening all throughout the movie. This frozen clock on Hero's wall is a reference to the frozen clock from Back to the Future, as is this huge helmet that this guy's wearing a la Doc Brown. I'm just saying the seeds have definitely been planted. And there's even some evidence that the Big Hero 6 team has already been doing some time traveling in the other movies. Does this Kakamura look familiar to you? Where do you think he got the idea for that face paint. How about this tiny little out of time and place snowman Elsa builds? How does she know about Baymax? I don't know. But it would very much not surprise me if Elsa had an accidental glimpse at what she thought was a strange looking snowman while the big hero six was traveling back in time to meet Fred's ancestors. See, it's all coming together. And so far, those are the movies that I feel like we've been able to slowly start working into this idea of a Disney verse. And you might be thinking, well, where does that leave Wreck-It Ralph or Zootopia? And to be fair, Zootopia is is tricky because it's a world that has its own history and entirely inhabited by animals and they even have like their own DVD versions of all of these movies. So we're not ruling it out, we're just sticking a pin in it. And Ralph Breaks the Internet I think is incredibly interesting because it's a super meta, very self-aware movie and they included a collaboration with all of the Disney princesses. Personally, I think that's them testing this idea to see how it goes. And what was included in all of the advertising for that movie? That one scene. They know people wanna see all the princesses hanging out together. And just simply between all of the princesses and all the other movies and all of the technology capabilities from the Big Hero 6 team, something tells me it's not completely impossible for Ralph and Penelope to make their way into the fold. But with all of those ideas laid out, it makes me very excited to see more and learn more about Rhea and the Last Dragon and to see if there are any other ways that this idea could start coming together. As of now, I don't know much about what this movie is about other than a girl named Rhea and a dragon. See, we, we did our homework. But I do super hope that somehow it allows us to continue this idea that eventually all of these people can meet. I mean, think about it. All we really need is one really good post credit scene and we'll all be on board with this idea. I have to imagine in a world entirely full of dragons, maybe there's also magic, which is a really good piece of connective tissue. So maybe somewhere like a magic portal opens up. They don't explain it in the movie, but then cut to end credits. A fancy computer picks up a disturbance in the silent sparrow portal. A dragon comes out and off screen, you hear Baymax say, scanning. Guys, honestly, I'm not totally sure what I think the narrative could be for this particular scenario or what the joint big bad could potentially be. It almost feels like trying to come up with the Pixar theory 
before Brave came out, before you realized that Boo is the witch and time traveling and doing all these things and leaving these Easter eggs along the way. So I feel like we're still early on in the idea, but if enough of us come together, maybe we can will it to happen. And speaking of coming together, don't forget that this Friday night, April 24th at 8 p.m., we are going to be having Theory Talk here as a live stream on the Super Carlin Brothers channel. Don't forget to set your alarms. Again, it is April 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But guys, as always, thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more pieces of this puzzle, you can check out this video right here to figure out the Tadashi is here theory, or this video right here to figure out how Fred is related to Hans. But otherwise, guys, until next time, bye.